Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel for the first of a new painting series. Now, something a little bit different that we're going to do with this series, uh, before we actually get into it. I am painting and recording the audio for this as I go. Um, so instead of painting, editing the video and doing a voiceover, I am talking whilst I am holding this mini. Um, this is so that I can show you the technique and explain what I'm doing on the palette and on the model. This is going to be a series where we use a specific brand of paints that I will get to in just a minute to paint these to look like the cards or as close to the cards as we can get them. We are going to be painting one of every mini um, in the full Hero Quest collection. Um, that's the the modern uh, Hero Quest, not the old one, but the newer one. Um, from the core box all the way up to the latest released. Um, I think it's the Ogre Horde, Kingdom of the Ogre Horde, something like that. But uh, yeah, the Ogre Horde. So that whatever latest expansion, we're just doing them all. Uh, we're doing one mini for, or one video for every mini. Um, single in the box so obviously there are multiple orcs in the core box we are doing the one orc in expansions such as keller's keep where there are only duplicates of what we have in the box i will not be painting them in this style but i will have a video where i show you how to speed paint them using uh, contrast paints but for these videos i have been in touch with Duncan Rhodes, Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, uh, Two Thin Coats, and I asked them if they would be interested in supporting this new series. And they said yes, they would love to. They asked me what paints I would like for it. And obviously not knowing exactly what models are in every expansion at the time of asking, I said to them, give me the middle of each of the triads from um, their first set. So if you're not familiar with the Two Thin Coats line, um, they have been designed so that you get a shadow, a mid-tone and a highlight in all the colours. They have a colour wheel chart that I will show you now. So this is it here. And what I've done is asked them for the centre of each one so the the mid tone um, a number of the blacks a couple of the golds and the silver the washes and the mid tone for each of the sort of the browns the ivories and the flesh tone and the aim of this is to show you that you don't need to start with the full triad system um, a lot of uh, people starting out um, aren't sure you know what paints to buy necessarily um, they aren't sure you know do they need all this triad system do they need games workshop obviously do a multiple system you get like seven or eight shades and co colors and everything else so what i'm doing is showing you guys that with just the mid-tones and then some mixing on the palette we can get a variety of shades and tones um so that we can paint these minis up that way you guys only need to buy a, a number of paints i think it's probably about 40 paints total um let's have a quick count up there you go 27 paints including the washes and you don't necessarily have to use the washes and that is a few of the uh couple of the golds the one of the silvers and some of the blacks and greys and stuff so with that being said i would just like to thank um two thin coats duncan Rhodes painted academy for um sending these out to me and supporting this entire series um that is very much appreciated so thank you to them and for today's first video we are going to paint this guy the orc I figured we'll start with something relatively easy 
we'll start with the orc and we'll try and get something similar to this now obviously we are limited on our palette a little bit um, that is part of the challenge and also part of showing you um, what can be achieved so obviously um, I'm aiming this series at those of you a little bit newer to painting um, but if you have been painting for a while and would like to know how well these work um, and how to you know achieve new techniques or anything like that then you are more than welcome to continue watching and if you have any feedback or suggestions you can let me know down in the comments so first of all the greens let's get on with the greens i will put a list down in the comments um sorry in the video description of all the paints used but obviously i can't tell you the ratios you will have to watch the video through for that but what we're going to do first is we're going to try and achieve this much more yellow green make sure i get it on camera so there's much more yellow green that the orc has rather than this more vibrant as they call it emerald green so first of all we'll get down if we can get it a few drops of uh the emerald green but we need to not only make it a little bit more yellow but we need to make it darker so we're going to use skulker yellow and ancient forest give it a nice good shake Ooh, <laughs> the lid wasn't fully on properly so the yellow has gone and leaked out so i will give a little bit of a thing on that so these paints i've noticed when i shook them up earlier it did the same thing and now i've got paint everywhere i've noticed that there are two clicks so when you're tightening these up you get one about there and then you can carry on going and it sort of slips and then so you've got that bit there you can see it's getting tight and then it comes off and when you tighten it back on it goes really tight and you think that that is it but it's not you've got that slip there so you can see i slip on and then you can tighten it right down and that means that the the, the top of the cap is now plugging the hole on the uh, the bottle so do make sure that they are tightened fully down before shaking them up otherwise you end up with paint everywhere and then finally for the third color we're using ancient forest and this is what we're going to use to make the color darker so you can see i've done it there as well a little bit thick this one doesn't want to come out as easy hopefully it doesn't squirt out but uh yeah there's that one so there and then there okay on to the mixing so first of all we need to get that yellow green so we'll get our green i need quite a bit of it it's the brush and we're going to grab so if you notice that was three uh sort of brushfuls of uh the green and now we're going to mix in the yellow and this is going to get us that yellow green so that was one brushful you can see it's gone a little bit towards it and then we'll do another one And that gets us almost at that highlight color which is pretty much what we're after so that's our highlight and we can go a little bit lighter than that if we need to and then we're going to grab the green do the same again Quite 
quite similar there. Let's get a bit more green on the palette. So obviously with this, there is a lot of mixing and you know, it will be easier to go with the triad system um, and get the colors that you actually want. But this is, if you're starting out and you're wanting to try the paints, then go for the center color or the center shade tone for each of the paints and you can make up your own. So I'll do a little bit more. I want to darken it slightly. This is going to be the mid tone. And we'll even lighten up this one slightly. And then finally, probably should have left more room on the palette. But we'll go with the brown. And this is going to be our darker one. So the brown will darken it up slightly. And then we'll add a little bit of yellow just to get it towards that yellow green. It's probably a bit too much. There you go. So you can see we've got a bit more of a gray, a gray green there. Uh, hopefully that's translating well on the camera. So that there is our three mixes. I'm just going to make up more of that middle tone. And then we'll lighten up that end tone. The highlight. So a little bit more yellow. And it is just a case of mixing your colours to get the right sort of look and feel for what you're after. And there we go, that works out. That's quite nice. So now we can start applying this to the model. So what we're going to do is start with the darkest one and we're going to apply this all over the green areas and this is two thin coats so do exactly what it says and expect to apply two thin coats now i have watered this down a little bit i had a bit too much water on the brush um, but these paints work brilliantly straight out of the dropper bottles um, on a wet palette you don't need to thin them um, at least in the test run I didn't and as you can see thinning them a little bit does make them a little bit sort of translucent but they do work brilliantly out of the pot so again this is the shadow tone the undertone of the model uh, it's what's going to be in those recesses and in those uh, shadow areas on the underside so that's all hand there and if there is any editing guys it will literally be just to speed up what i'm doing Okay, so that's the darker tone done. Now we can add some shadows and if I can find the right color. There. So we're actually going to add or use a mud wash over this, but only in the under areas. Now I know you shouldn't really put, I don't think I've got, I've got a flesh wash, but no, that won't be right. So we're going to use a mush, mud wash, and this will be similar to, I suppose, uh, Agrax Earth Shade, I'm expecting. So 
So that's that one there, Battle Mud Wash. And what we're going to do with this is put it on the under areas um, where that shadow will be. And that's going to give us that darker tone in those recesses and that sort of under area. You can, if you want, do this over the whole model. And then we can go back in with that mid-tone. Otherwise, you can just do it on that under area. So you can see here, I'm just applying it sort of around the edges on this lighter area. And then when we get into shadow, such as under here, we'll go into apply it a little bit more. Top of the foot, I'm doing it all over just so I can get it in between those toes. And then in here we'll do it all over so we can get it into the uh, the gaps in the muscles there. The face will do it all over so we can get it in the eyes, the mouth, things like that. And then we'll do it down this way. So I suppose you could say this is more of our inner shadow area that we're doing rather than mixing up the green, we'll do it with this. You don't have to be super neat because we will neaten it up in a moment. get it in the fingers here just so we've got it in those finger gaps okay so we'll let that dry and then we'll come back to it in just a bit okay so now that most of it is dried, um, we've still got a little bit of white uh, wet in the recesses, but that's okay for me. You guys can totally wait until it's fully dry if you want. But you can see we've now got this much darker um, sort of base tone in the under areas of him. Oh, get that on. Hopefully that will show it up. So you can see in between these uh, his pecs and on the back here especially you'll notice that we've got sort of not splotching because that is the shade that's in the recesses um, but you've got along the muscle here you can see this darker area whereas on the outside you can't and that is because the first paint that we put down the first color is going to be the shadow tone in the deepest parts of the muscle because the light's still going to get in there it's not a you know a deep crease so it's going to be skin tone whereas under here you've got shadow right in there because no light can get in there or you know very little light can get in there so what we're going to do now is take this mid-tone that we did or that we you know made up and we're actually going to highlight the muscles just on the upper surface area 
leaving that shadow mix in the recesses. If it has dried up a bit, you know, a little bit of water and that will revive it. Or alternatively, you can mix your, your tones up um, as you need them instead of at the beginning like I did. So we've got this little bit here, get a little bit of light along here. I get some light hit in here and again this is that sort of that mid tone now not the shadow tone so we can cover a fair amount of the model with this and try and leave sort of nearer the um, other edges in shadow so we want to leave some of that earlier color in there And then we can do the same with the front here. And then same on this side. So we've got here. Some muscle there. A little bit there. And then some up there. So on top of the head here, obviously you want to make sure that we're just getting the direction that the light is coming from along here. Okay, so that's the mid-tone done there. Uh, it's probably a little bit more green than we want, but obviously we're just sort of trying to get a similar look. 
it's not going to go a hundred percent. So now we can take this highlight color and this is going to be used for edge highlighting things like the nose, sort of the top of the cheek, the lips, sort of the ear, knuckles, and then the most uppermost area of these muscles where the light is just going to hit that a little bit more. For an area such as the head where we want to blend it, get the paint on there, rinse the brush really quick and then just touch the brush when it's slightly damp to that line and it will break it up a little bit and you'll get a bit more of a, a smoother blend. You can also do it by thinning down the paint and glazing up to sort of smooth out those transitions slightly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is try and get a 50-50 mix between the highlight and the mid-tone and just go back around and sort of blend in 
those smoother areas or those muscle areas into that highlight colour. Okay, so if we take a quick comparison, now straight away you're going to see that mine is a lot more on the green side, this one is more on the yellow. Um, in order to get it like that, we are going to have to add a lot more yellow and really pull away from that green, which for me I don't really want to do. I'm kind of liking the, the green of this orc. So I think we will leave it there. And what we'll work on next will be the the cloth there the loin cloth and this one should be fairly easy because we've actually already got the brown now and this is a similar brown so we're just going to go in with this it does seem that the uh the photo is a little bit or the, the picture is a little bit more on the redder side that's fine we're just looking for similar color matches Okay, so going back to the mud wash, I just want to make up a second little bit here. Oh, don't shake these wash bottles because <laughs> you will shake the, uh, the liquid out. And then to this, we're going to add a little bit of boar hide. Um, this has a slightly, a slightly reddish tint to it. Um, at least that's what it appears to here. And I want to give this wash a bit of a red tint. I'm hoping that we can achieve this using that wash. And we are going to have to water this down because obviously we've just added um, pigment to this so it's no longer that wash consistency so just going to add about a brush full of water and 
and then we'll see if we can pick up the rest of this wash and get that in there now really you shouldn't do washes on wet pallets um, but I don't mind too much so there you go it gets a nice reddish tint in there reason you shouldn't put washes on a wet pallet is obviously it's going to pull some of that moisture from the pallet thinning down the paint a bit more you should really do it in a pot plus they can run everywhere um, you know being a liquid they're going to want to run down the pallet so there you go hopefully the camera can pick that up but we've got a bit of a reddish tint to that cloth now um, which will give us the deeper red tint that is in here okay while that wash is drying we can actually work on the rest of the the model I'm going to take some plate armor which is the mid silver or the metallic uh, paint but we need this armor to look a little bit blue um, if you look on the card it does seem to have a quite a bluish tint to it so we're going to make that up by taking some Elysium blue and adding or placing a drop on the palette we don't need a lot of this as we just want to tint that silver not actually mute it down and if you're mixing um, a matte paint in with a metallic obviously you're going to mute that metallic down a little bit so what we'll do is we'll mix this up separate and we can make sure that we get the right kind of blue so about 50 50 looked about right there so a bit more of that more of this and we should have hopefully our blue metallic probably need a little bit more blue on the palette And then we can apply this all over the metal areas. Okay, on the sword, it is only the handguard here that is in this metallic silk, uh, sorry, this metallic blue look the bottom um, bit of metal down here okay and also this little sort of raised detail that runs down the sort of the edge of the blade, the back edge of the blade. So for this, just use the side of the brush with a little bit of paint loaded on it. Not too much because you don't want it to blob onto the sword. Just very carefully hover and touch that raised area. You don't want to blob it down because you'll hit the blade. And there we go. And then we can just go around and make sure that we've got everything neat in any spots back up. So there we go. That is the blue 
armor. And then while we're here and we have the silver out, we'll go in and paint the blade of the sword as well. And if you do go over the the, uh, the raised part there, don't worry, you can just go back over with that blue once that's dried. But obviously be careful if you can, as it's better to not have to go back over it. Okay, so for the brown, uh, the brown, for the belt, we're actually going to use, if I can find it in my paint pot here, there it is, the boar hide, so this one, uh, which we already have on the palette, as it's quite red, and we don't want it, you know, that red, we're going to mix in some of the, um, that light brown that we've got there. And then into that, just to darken it up a little bit, we're going to take some Doom Death Black. Just a little bit on the palette there, we don't need a lot. A small amount on the brush tip and then we're just going to mix that into half there aren't a huge amount of straps on here okay and then we'll apply that to all of the straps um, around his arms and his belt Obviously, with it being pre-assembled, it is a little bit difficult to get to some areas. Just do your best, because that's all that ever matters in painting. Do your best and be happy with what you've done. Okay, so going back to the loincloth, we can now take this mid color, I um, can't remember the name of it. it, wasn't sandstone, it was the other one, ancient forest. So we can take some of this ancient forest and we can now go and highlight those surface areas just the raised parts take some of that mix that into that brown and that's going to become our highlight for the belts and straps and then we're just going to go along the top and bottom of each one 
you can't reach them, don't worry. Just leave them. It means they're in shadow and they probably wouldn't have a highlight anyway. Okay, so now we want to hope that we can get that off of there. No, that's gone in. Got paint on there. There we go and cover it up. Nice. So now we need to get a shade on the metal in the recesses. We don't want to cover it over those flat areas because it will dull the metal down we don't want to do that so what we're going to do is take a wash and this is going to be if I can find it oblivion black wash place this down where we've got the other washes I don't know why but they don't always want to come out I think the the bearing tends to sit in the uh, the nozzle and block some of that paint so taking a number one brush here we're just going to get this to run down into these recesses. And you'll see all I'm doing is just touching right down in that recess and letting the paint flow off of the, the bristles. For the area such as here, where we want a bit of definition, we can just sort of trace around it. Like so, and I'm completely out of shot for all of that. But there you can see what I'm doing, I'll try and get it in camera now. So all I'm doing is just touching down into these recesses. And then for this panel, just touching right along that edge and letting that wash flow off into it. Do the same with the arm here. I'm 
and the underside. Now if you want to darken the underside, you can by all means brush this, brush this on and let it sit in those recesses and dull some of that underside up, um, which is where the light wouldn't hit anyway and so it would look a little little less shiny For the sword, we're going to do the whole blade. And for the ribs, we're just going to get it in along these sort of two sort of ridged areas there, and then a little bit around that central emblem. And that will give us our shadows for the metallic areas. We'll now set aside, set that aside and let it dry in a sec, but we will do this here while it does. And for that, we want this one, Spartan Bronze. There we go, that's better. So that darker stuff was the um, the medium that the metallic flakes or whatever it is that they use in the metallics hasn't mixed into properly. So do make sure you give them a good shake to get that out. And then we're just gonna take some of that and go over this piece here. Also going to use this for the gold. So we're gonna go on the belt buckle here. And this emblem here. Although you could probably leave this till we use the actual gold and we'll go over that anyway. And you can see we've got some of that black wash in there, so 
we'll leave that, let that dry and come back in a few minutes. Okay, so me being me, I am not happy with this green. Um, it's too vibrant or too dark, too green for the orc on the card. So what I'm going to do is really mix up what's on the palette here. Thin it down. I can see it's still too vibrant. It's not muted enough. Now to mute a colour, you use white. You don't use white to lighten a colour because it will mute it, which is what we want now. But usually if you want to brighten a colour, use something like yellow. Um, obviously certain colours like blue, that yellow is going to change it to green. So you do have to be careful. In that case, you would use white. Um, but if green obviously uses blue and yellow to make it brighter, you use yellow. So if we do this, you can now see we've got more of that, that muted paler white or paler green. Now, if we go over the top of this, this is going to obviously um, stand out way too much against that darker green. So what I'm going to do is make a glaze and hopefully we can change this. So let's have a look. So we can glaze over and all the glaze does is tints the color with whatever the glaze is. So in the case of this, we're actually getting this colour over the top and it will take a little bit to build up. Okay, so not quite there, but it's a little bit closer. Um, this one still has a bit more of a yellow tint to it. Um, but I think if we try and get that anymore, we're going to lose the detailing in this. So we'll say that that is the colour that we are going for. <laughs> okay, next we're going to highlight the metallic areas. Um, just a, a little edge highlight on some of these sharper edges with the pure silver. So you don't want to go too mad with it because otherwise you'll take away from that blue. Maybe we can just do a few little edge highlights here and there, just sort of touching it, make it look like a bit of battle damage or whatever. Scuffing and some of that silver has gone a little bit more shiny. And the same with the sword, I'm going to go down this sloped edge and then on the top part of these beveled bits and then around the top here and then along the edge.
on the underside we're just going to do a little bit of an edge highlight down that blade edge nearly there guys so for this little metallic piece over the top it's a lot darker on the card um, it is sort of more grimier and dirtier so we're just going to take some of that brown wash again that, that mud wash and just go over all of that it has taken some of that black wash in there but that's fine okay now to dot the eyes and paint the teeth <laughs> sorry little pun there um, yellow for the eyes there's one turn the model upside down so we can get two there's the eyes and then we'll do the teeth so we've got one here one here a row of them just under that lip there and then toenails couple of fingernails that we can just make out here and can't quite make them in there so there's no point in doing them so gold let's grab a dragon's gold This may have some of that medium on top, so we'll squirt that out if it does. There we go, and it didn't have any, so perfect. This will be for the belt buckle. and the little emblem on here and on the sword being very careful not to blob it And then finally, we just need to do the hand guard there. And that appears to be the same leather as the belts. So we'll do it the same. Grab some of that highlight. Okay. And then last but not least, we need to get these markings on him. So on his hand here, his face or his head three stripes on the arm uh, or two in a triangle but we'll just do the two stripes and then you've got these stripes that come outwards from the inner thigh going out for that we are going to use sanguine scarlet
and this looks like it's probably about the right tone and shade for what we want. So we've got two stripes that come up across here and we're actually going to sort of dot these in because they are quite sort of messy and patchy on the uh, the design on the card. So there's one and then There's the other, his face, we're going to be coming down to there, and then to there, down to the eye a little bit, it comes down the lip there, Like so. And then the thighs, like I said, comes from the inside and is like a stripe that goes out. And then he's got a little bit on his knuckles and that. So we'll just go in and dot some of that around. Like so. And there we have it, guys. So he is not exactly like the card uh, but we did get close uh, we managed to match the loincloth quite similar uh, the armor it was just that green tone working with those colors um, i would say i just needed to add more white um, just to really sort of mute it down and then a touch more yellow to bring it more to the yellow side but otherwise i'm happy with it um yeah looks nice so i hope you guys have enjoyed the video if you are planning on painting along to this and you have instagram um post it on instagram your you know your finished model and tag my instagram in it you can find my instagram down in the link there and i would love to see what you guys um do and how you do see if you get a better yellow tone than me um, for the skin if you enjoyed this video guys please hit that thumbs up button if you would like to see more videos of these where this is a ongoing series where we're going to try and match the cards it's not going to be 100 percent, but we will try um, across the entire hero quest range then hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of when new videos go live i will be posting a video um, either just before this one or within a few days of this one outlining the upcoming content that I have planned for the um, the rest of the year for the channel so do be sure to look out for that and get an idea of what we're going to be aiming for for the remainder of the year um, I have a lot of content planned so hopefully I can uh, meet all of that but yeah there we go guys that is the finished model as always guys i hope you have enjoyed the content but this is me signing out so until next time as always take it easy keep painting those minis